I'm Erin Spain. Welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to show you how I built this DIY plywood desk with these fun little magnetic hidden storage drawers. Now I built a desk similar to this in the past for my oldest son, but it was before I had my channel. So there is a written tutorial for that and I will link to that below. But with all three of my kids home doing digital learning right now, they each needed a dedicated workspace. So we needed one more good sized desk. And this is what I came up with. So I'm really excited to share it with you today. If you have any questions for me, please leave those in the comment section below. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel and click the bell icon and let's get started. I started with a four foot by eight foot sheet of three quarter inch thick maple plywood and I cut it down to the following dimensions. Two pieces at four feet by 18 inches for the top and bottom. Eight pieces at four inches by 18 inches. These are for the sides and divider partitions. You can adjust the length of these if you plan on adding a back to your desk, but I left the back of mine open. Four pieces at three and three quarter inches by 16 and a half inches. Four pieces at three and three quarter inches by five inches. These are for the little pullout bins with the holes on the front. For the larger cuts, I used my handheld circular saw and I always clamp down a straight edge to use as a guide. Then I used my miter saw for the smaller cuts. You'll also need to cut two pieces at 12 and a half inches by 14 inches by two and one eighth of an inch cut to fit for the bottoms of your magnetic boxes. Four pieces at 14 inches by four inches and you can adjust the length on these depending on how long you want your magnetic boxes to be. I didn't want mine to be too long since I know my son will pull them out and use them as pencil boxes and stuff like that. So regardless of how long you make them, just make sure you allow for space for the magnet in the back. And then cut six pieces at four inches by one inch, which we will laminate to create the front panels on the magnetic boxes. And that is a lot of cuts, so I will add the cut list to the description box for you. Then I gave everything a good sanding using my random orbit sander. By the way, I will link to all of the tools and supplies that I used for this in the description box below. Okay, first I built the pullout bins with the holes in the front to use as finger pulls. So I took two of the three and three quarter inch by five inch pieces and measured and marked the center of them. And then I drilled holes with my one inch Forstner bit. I created the boxes by attaching everything using wood glue and a brad nailer with one and a quarter inch brad nails. I attached the front first just because I wanted to make sure everything was attached straight since I am terrible at getting things square. And this is the only part that will show so that's what mattered the most. I always apply wood glue with a silicone glue brush and I am obsessed with this one. I will link to it below for you. I used a tiny bit of wood filler to cover up the nail holes on the front when I was done building them, and then I allowed it to dry and sanded it smooth. Then I set those aside so I could make the little storage bins that will pop in and out with these little magnetic touch latches. I wanted the front of it to be made out of a panel of laminated plywood that showed the exposed edges, so I cut the pieces an inch thick since whenever I cut strips thinner than that, they tend to be harder to work with and more flimsy. Then I laminated three of them together using wood glue and clamps, and then I repeated the process so I would have two of these panels. I let the glue cure overnight, and then I removed them from the clamps and gave them a good sanding. Then I assembled the boxes the same way I did the other ones with wood glue and my brad nailer. Now I ended up having to sand these down quite a bit in order to get them to slide in the slot because it was such a tight fit, but I wanted them to be as flush to the edges as possible in order to blend in as much as they could. So if you don't wanna run into this problem, you could always make them the same size as the other boxes and cut them to three and three quarters inches high instead of the full four inches. Next, I used my pocket hole jig to drill three pocket holes along one of the longer sides of each of my four inch by 18 inch pieces. And by the way, yes, I'm standing right in the way. I literally could not have positioned the camera in a worse spot. <laughs> Sorry about that, but whenever you're done drilling, this is what they should look like. I swapped out my pocket hole jig drill bit with the driver bit that came with it so that I could attach the divider partition pieces and side pieces to the desk. I flipped what will later be the top of the desk upside down and then I measured and marked 16 inches in from each end and lined up two of my boards and attached them using one and a quarter inch pocket hole screws. By the way, you could use wood glue for added reinforcement. I just like to make my furniture easy to disassemble in case I ever wanna move it or swap it out or store it more easily. 
I change my mind a lot and I build things all the time, so it's just easier for me to do it this way. I attach the sides the same way using one and a quarter inch pocket hole screws. In order to determine the spacing of the other divider pieces, I placed the boxes where I wanted them to go, and then I held the divider in place and marked it. Then I moved the box out of the way and attached the pieces with pocket hole screws. By the way, please ignore how terrible these boxes look. I ended up having to go back and fix them later. Yes, there are gaps. I told you I'm really terrible at getting things square. I placed the bins with the holes in the front next to the center cubby, and then I placed the magnetic boxes next to the outer side pieces, leaving a small cubby in between each of them. By the way, you could modify the design and add drawer slides and make these into actual drawers if you wanted to. I just wanted them to be little storage bins that my son can pull out and carry around or use as pencil boxes or store toys in or whatever. Next, I positioned the boxes and attached my magnetic touch latches. I made sure the magnets were pushed in when I marked them and screwed them on. This way, when you press the box in from the front, it will pop out and allow you to pull it the rest of the way out. I attached the little magnetic plates that came with it onto the back of my box. Next, I placed the bottom of the desk on top, remember we're working upside down right now, and then I pre-drilled holes using a countersinking drill bit around the perimeter of the desk and attached it using one and a quarter inch wood screws. Now I like the look of natural plywood, but you could always paint it or stain it at this point. I decided to keep it natural and I just sealed it with a polycrylic top coat. Also, if you don't like the look of the exposed plywood edge, then you could use some edge banding, but I like it so I'm keeping it exposed. <coughs> then I attached the hairpin legs, which I ordered from a company called DIY Hairpin Legs, and I will link to them in the description box. They have lots of options, but I chose the raw steel three rod hairpin legs and the height of these are 25 inches and they come with a wax to apply, which prevents rust. Then I flipped the whole thing over and that was it. And now for the outtakes. With some, oh sh Don't mind me. So, uh, baby, I'm recording. Okay. Hi, honey. You doing okay? Oh my gosh, it's so hot. <clears throat> and, can you close the door? Thank you. Close it. Close it. Thanks so much for watching. You can find me online at erinspain.com and on social media at Aaron Spain blog. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And in the meantime, please check out some of my other videos. Thanks.